Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. I am super excited today because I have bought something that, well, frankly, I never dreamed I would buy. A, I figured I would never really have a, a good excuse to buy one. I, do, I certainly don't have the need. And they're also pretty expensive. So two reasons right there why I figured I'd probably never own one. But turns out the need to buy it is because it was just so affordable. I couldn't turn it down, guys. We could not afford not to buy it. Yep, that's what I'm telling the wife. We couldn't afford not to buy it. So some things, sometimes things come up that you just can't afford not to buy. A D9H just happened to be that something today. I believe this is an early to mid 70s D9H. Got a full U-blade, 1800 hours on an overhaul. Really nice undercarriage. I'd say the undercarriage is 90% or better. Got a rebuilt final drive on this side, single shank ripper, a nice cab with working air conditioning. Unlike most things I buy, this thing is turnkey, put it to work operational. Do I need a D9H? Absolutely not. Do I want a D9H? Well, who doesn't? Like I said, for the price, couldn't turn this one down. We are here today to knock the blade apart and load it up. So I got my buddy Sam from Scrappy Industries. He's got his remote control Terex. Should be able to load that blade up on the trailer. Gino in the service rig. We're ready to go. Big John on the film crew. All right, let's, let's disassemble a D9. Action. All right, so first things first here, we need to reposition this unit just a little bit so we can get the truck with the crane backed in right. I'm gonna do a little cold start action. Contact. All right, so we got the tractor all pulled up close here. Gino's service truck on the other side there, he's gonna handle all the, uh, the light work and let the Terex handle all the loading. So according to the CAT manual, this whole blade assembly with the tilt cylinders, the arms and everything is like 18,000 and change. So close to 19,000, you might as well say. So the little Terex should be able to handle all that. And having the service truck here is just going to make it a lot easier. All 
We should tell everybody for the video purposes, this is December 26th. While most people are out returning the gifts that they didn't want, I'm out picking up mine. Should be able to rotate that bar though. Just being dramatic for effects for the film. Like a discovery show. This is my first major film production. Oh, these were barely tight. You shackling or are you just hooking? Hook work. Oh, she ain't here. Yeah, that'll work. You look like you're pretty good up and down. You know, how hard was this to take apart? How hard was it? Yeah, it was. Oh, it's falling apart. It's nowhere near as easy as that TD25, but that was like a world record setter there. Yeah. Perfect, John. Perfect. So right now he's booming down to try and hit the other cylinder. So they can pin that one up too. Gino's over trying to find some hardware to make it all happen. Let's see if he made it. Thank you. Okay, so on big machines like this, and U-Blades specifically, you cannot haul the machine with the blade on it. It's way too wide, at least for around our area. Like there's places out west you can get away with it. In our case, we have to completely disassemble the blade. So the actual mold board has to come off, and then all these push arms. We've got to disconnect all these braces inside there. It makes for a pretty good jag of work all so we can nestle it nicely on a trailer and haul it down the road legal like. So what Sam's trying to do is rock that forward and then that ram should fall down. A little more! That's what we wanted right there, beautiful. Look at that, oh. Tire iron and all. Oh, just grab that thing. Yeah, buddy. That's a good thing about wear. Got this scrappy RC crane set up. That is something. Dude, that, this is scrappy, all right, yeah. She is loose, but not oh, that loose. No. Oh, actually, yeah. Oh. That do anything for you? Are you prying off of your steel toe right now? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm glad I'm not your insurance provider. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it! 
Look at that, buddy. Gino, you're blocking the shot here. I'm impressed. Watch out, Gino. Hope you use good chain binders. Trap in. Are they good? That's, that's <laughs> debatable. I'll tell you what, guys, it is nice to have friends like Sam and Gino and Big John here. Should have drove the Grove out here. What are you thinking? You gonna cheat it to one side? Or you gonna split, put a blade arm on each side? Stand back. We got all the cranes folded up and put away. The blade is loaded. That blade doesn't look that big when you're showing it by itself, but when you put it next to the carry deck, <laughs> she's she's got some scale to her. We just got our heavyweight, so time to do some math to figure out how much this is costing me. All right, well, we just rolled up here to the National Pike Steam Show where the D9 is going to live for a while. We're going to drop the blade today and go back for the tractor tomorrow. Gonna hurry up and try to kick this stuff off real quick. We're losing daylight pretty quick.
Like my new hoodie. I like it. I'm a cat guy today. <laughs> 15 bucks off their website though, seriously. That Should, one. I shouldn't be promoting them. You should go to dieselcreek.com and get your own Diesel Creek swag, but I feel weird wearing my own stuff in public. It's just not me. Buy a D9, get a shirt? Yes. Yeah, buy a D9, get a free hoodie. <laughs> That's what they should be running, that kind of promo. All right, so the same routine as the blade mission. We're getting an empty weight. Then we're gonna find out what this thing weighs. First weight. Truck Six nine. Wait, what? What's she weigh? Uh, off weight, weighs 54. Oh no, I lied, 48,920. 48,920 is what he says it weighs. We'll see how close he is. Give me a little start. Don't you hate that? <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Mine does the same thing. Starter solenoid. If this isn't a commercial for Yanka ropes, I don't know what is. Perfect. Never had to pull it before. Oh my God, it doesn't fit. <laughs> so Gino, have you ever bump started this before? Honestly, yeah. We had to do it in Nashville one time. The starter went out of it again. And uh, apparently, apparently today is the day for another one. I've never bump started a Peter bump, so this is exciting for me. <laughs> hey, don't shut it off anymore, because I can't pull you once you put a D9 on it. You could definitely pull a starter with a D9 on it. Buddy, that worked pretty well. Yeah, I really couldn't complain about that. It's glad you, you good thing you brought your Ford starter for your beat and build, you know? <laughs> what do you say? What's, the, what's Ford, the total? 48.9 with a lightweight. Minus a little pride. Left a little bit on the scale. But I'm going to shut it off again. <laughs> I better just start. Don't you do it. We'll get, when we get there, we'll start. Okay, if you park on a hill, you can do it. Oh, yeah.
Gina's getting his rig backed in here right now. Got a detached climber up on there. Got Big John up on the trailer getting all the good shots. Make sure you guys drop a comment and thank Big John for his efforts on this one. Above and beyond. We're lowering the trailer down, dumping the air out so we can unchain our third axle because I'm too poor to have an airlift third. And, uh, and we'll unchain it, open those ball valves, and then we'll have all three axles down for hauling the tractor back. Maximum weight distribution. Yeah. How far are you letting this out? Uh, all the way. Oh, okay. Like, leave like two links hanging out. I think this is, oh, it's frozen. Some guy took the tractor trailer to the beacon at 4.30 this morning. So now everything's frozen. <laughs> I was like, that seems like a bad idea, but what do I know? I guess it's no different than running down the rain in a slushy road on an yeah. early morning. I, I wouldn't even offer, like, if I worked there, I would just call in sick today. Like, I'm not working in this cold. Well, it's, it's 80 degrees inside. There. I don't care. That's the best place to work. That place is like a sauna inside. Yeah. That keeps Exhibit A attached to Exhibit B. What happened to that line and right there? It, what? That electrical cord, she's got a slight kink in her. I didn't think they put 90 whoa, degrees whoa, in whoa. wires. That's custom. You can't get that kind of shit at Walmart. <laughs> Trailer just falls apart. God, everything is frozen. How much they charge you to wash that thing? 99 bucks. Really isn't that bad. You know who's paying for that, don't you? <laughs> this guy. Hey. Yep. That's the only reason why I got permits today was because you were paying for them. We have permits? We have we have three permits. Down. Chain this baby down, get her going up the steamship. Well, I'm excited. This is a freaking dozer. I never once in my life dreamed that I'd own a D9. Yet here we are. All thanks to you guys watching, so make sure if you like this kind of content, you like seeing some guy buy a D9 even though he doesn't need one, be sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe, see what we do with this thing. Buddy, that thing is crooked. You cross chaining on each end. Um, let me get it up in the air first, cause it'll deflect so much. Yeah, I know. I'm not gonna tighten them yet. I'm just getting them rigged up.
How's your guess? Well, I guess way wrong. <laughs> we gotta do some math. What was the lightweight? Two. We are at 142, 240. Minus, I think it was 48, 9. 93, 340. I was pretty good at 90,000 guessing on the deck. All right, so we're a little heavier than I thought, but not awful. We are, no, we got 40 miles left. Close enough. What's 40 miles among friends?
Hi. Picking up the axle. This is back to the poor man axle in reverse. Picking her up. Boy, this brake is horrible. Well, yeah, we just moved 142,000 pounds across three states. Of course, the brakes are going to be warm. What's up? All right, it's a couple days later. It has rained and snowed a whole bunch since then, and now it's thawed out and it's a mucky mess. But we're gonna slap a blade on this thing today, and hopefully we're gonna be pushing something by the end of the day. I got Gino back over here with the service truck. Our little redneck buddy Austin's here to help. We found a little crack on this pusher arm here. Might have to gouge that a little bit, throw some weld at it before we stab it back together. But everything else looks pretty good. But the yeah. mud doesn't look very good. The mud sucks. Should have brought a triaxle load of rock up here first. It's not in the mud. Oh boy, guys, we got her all back together. It's a sloppy mess out here, but you know what? There's no way that I'm gonna leave here without pushing some dirt today. What an absolute beauty. 111,000 pounds of freedom right there.
We got us a D9. As you can see, I got her parked up here next to the 8 and uh, Buddy Sam's TD25. This is a beast of a machine. It is literally twice the weight and uh, probably twice the pushing power, it would stand to reason, as the D8. Now, as you may have guessed, we don't need a D9, or I may have mentioned earlier in the video that we don't need the D9, but I couldn't afford not to buy it. Doing the math, I paid 200 a ton for this machine. That comes out to $11,100 if my math is correct. So this should be a $40,000, $50,000 machine all day long. I just got a screaming good deal on it, so that's why I bought it. We're going to play around with it for a while, and I believe I've already got a buyer lined out for it. So we're going to enjoy this thing while it's here, do some work up here at the Steam Show with it, and then uh, probably end up kicking it down the road. But it's going to be fun while it's here. I don't want to do much pushing today because, well, partially because of that right there. Just plugs up the tracks. Now I got to spend 20 minutes shoveling these tracks out after the video. But uh, it's a sloppy mess, so everything is just like jello, anyways. It's not really a good time to be dozing stuff, but kid in a candy store. I'm particularly excited for the ripper on the back here. Every year down in the dozer pit, we dig a hole and try to rip up some of the rock, the bedrock down underneath all the material that we blade around. And nobody has a D9 with a ripper on it up here, so I should be able to get through some rock that nobody else has been able to get through. A little bit of a different video for you guys since there's really not much repair that needs done on this thing. The blade's sloppy, but other than that, this thing's cherry. I really don't need anything. It just needs put to work. So in the next video you guys see on this machine, we are going to be doing just that. We're going to be uh, pushing a lot of dirt with this thing. Might have a dead machine to drag out of the way. We're going to put her to the test and see what she's capable of. And if those couple pushes were any indication, she's, she's capable of quite a bit. So anyways, guys, I'm going to leave this one off right here. If you guys like this video and want to see more on the D9, be sure you leave a comment down below and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me out. It helps me to keep buying D9s. So be sure you tickle that like button. And, uh, if you want to help support the channel in a little more direct way, head on over to dieselcreek.com. Pick yourself up some sweet swag over at the store. We've got hats, t-shirts, beer koozies, sticker packs, the works over there at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is always down in the description. But that's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Later. Later.